One of the biggest issues that I see every single day on the lesson tee is golfers hitting their wedges fat and thin. Now, often this can be an extremely frustrating shot. Now, I see a lot of misconceptions when it comes to the wedge, and in today's video, I'm gonna run through some really simple things that you can implement pretty much straight away, and you're gonna see a huge difference in terms of controlling your strike, which is vital when it comes to wedges. Now, the first thing that I actually wanna go through is what are we trying to see in terms of ball flight? Because I see so many misconceptions about this. In short, we want to hit wedges relatively low with a lot of spin. If you watch the best players in the world and you ever get the chance to watch them in person, you will be amazed at how low they hit their wedges. Reason for this is because it doesn't get affected by the elements anywhere near as much. Quite often when an amateur hits a wedge, the thing goes like a moon ball, it touches the moon, it comes down, and that thing's gonna get affected so much by the element. Now the first key to understand that is where do we hit this in the face? We wanna hit it low in the face, around this second to fourth groove, so really nice and low. This is gonna produce that low Ball flight with a lot of spin. So the first key that we're gonna go into in today's video is setup related and it is ball position. Now we've all heard that saying, you know, when you're hitting a wedge, get the ball really far back in your stance, loads of shaft lean and hit down it and get that nice sort of flat trajectory. Well, this is actually going to do the opposite effect. So the further we put the ball back in the stance, the steeper we are gonna hit down on the ball. Now the steeper we hit down, the higher the strike location goes in the club face. And actually this produces the opposite effect rather than launching it low because we're hitting it high in the face it's going to launch the ball high and it's going to give us low spin so actually by putting the ball back and trying to really compress the ball we're doing the opposite effect we're going to be producing a high launch now there is one situation to where you can make this work and a great example is a player like Zach Johnson if you are going to play the ball miles back in the stance first of all you have to open up your feet this is because the swing arc when you hit the ball really Really, really early on it's going to shove your path to the right so by opening up your stance it's going to square things out but the key with this is if you are going to play the ball way back you have to still be very very shallow so you want your angle of attack to be somewhere around say minus six to minus four in that sort of zone that's going to be a good sort of angle of attack for you to still get that strike nice and low in the face if you start to get any steeper, say minus 10, the ball's gonna launch high, it's gonna have the opposite effect. So you can make it work, but I think for the majority of amateurs out there who aren't necessarily practicing every single day, who maybe get to play once a week, we've got a far simpler way of doing this. So what I want you to do is get into your setup, have a little bit more weight in your left leg, so once you've got that weight, about 70% of your weight in your left leg, I then want the ball to roughly be underneath your lead eye. That's gonna be a great position for you. Now, as you can see right here, that's put the ball just forwards of middle. Now in this position, it's still gonna be in a spot to where we can have a slight descending blow on the ball, but it's not gonna be so far back that it's gonna get excessive. So if you are that golfer who's not practicing anywhere near as much as maybe you want to, this is gonna be a far easier way of controlling your angle of attack. Key number two that's gonna allow you to hit your wedges perfectly every single time, get rid of those fat and thin shots, is going to be understanding how to load the trail wrist and control the club face in the backswing. Now I see so many golfers struggle with wedges is because they get the club face open. And the reason for that is very much early on in the motion. What you tend to find is they start to roll the club face open. And as a result from the downline view, you can see sort of the toe is now leaning back on itself right here. As a result, as you come down, the face would be way open if you delivered any shaft lean. So what then happens is you throw it out to square it, that produces that really high launch and ultimately is not what we're trying to see. So actually in order to deliver this good shaft lean that we want, we actually need to have a slightly closed club face position. And this comes through understanding how to work the wrist correctly. And more specifically, the trail wrist. This is gonna be your best friend in this shot right here. We are going to be looking to very simply use the trail wrist as our low mechanism so you can see here if I do that how the club face is now pointing more down to the ground and all I am literally doing is feeling like my palm is pointing down as I set the club in the back of the trail wrist this is going to allow me for these distance wedges to get that club face in a much better position right there and you can see that in the downline view how nice that club face is is matching my spine angle if I turn back and turn through how now from the front on view you can see the club face is square and I've got a load of shuffling this is going to help me produce that beautiful lower trajectory as long as the angle of attack and strike location is good which is going to come in the third point so very simply what I want you to do is just to start with just get used to taking that club back with your right hand and just setting it back at shaft parallel 
with the right wrist, just right arm only. You can even grab your left hand and pop it on your right tricep right there and get used to that sensation right there. Now from there, you can even just turn through the shot. So you can start to make some little mini swings where you set it up in the back of the right wrist, feel like the club face is pointing down to the ground and then through. And what you'll notice is suddenly now it becomes such a simple motion because all we're gonna be doing is setting it in the back of the right wrist, we're done from there, and then we'll be able to work into point three, which is gonna be the pivot on the way through. So get used to that sensation of setting the club up in the back of the trail wrist. You can see club face is pointing down to the ground. If you look from the down line view and you start to see that face fan open, you know you're in trouble. So let me show you what that looks like. I'll do a little rehearsal swing here. I'll go super slow in the back swing. So I'm feeling like I set it in the back of the trail wrist. Club face is pointing a little bit more down to the ground. And as I come through, I'm gonna be able to get that beautiful low launching shot. Let me give it a go for you right here. Back of the trail wrist right there, have the club face point a little bit more down to the ground. So key number three is very much building off of what we've done so far. So we've moved the ball position forwards underneath the lead eye. From there, we've loaded the trail wrist correctly. That's now got the club face in a great position. The next key is to very much then feel like we can hold that load and then rotate through the shot. What is the thing that you always see guys and girls who are struggling with wedges do? They stop turning their body and on the way through, it gets into this very much a narrow position on the way through. Because you are throwing your angles out and quite often that is because people haven't loaded the trail wrist correctly, which is why it's crucial to get that right. Because they haven't loaded that, the club face gets open. They have to throw to square it, the body can't turn. And as a result, things just get a little bit groovy from there. So because we've set things up perfectly now, we want to feel like as we come through the shot that we can maintain that angle in the right wrist and get the body turning. So it's going to feel very much like a body release, a body turn on the way through. So with that in mind, I want to give you a drill with two variations that's just going to massively help you. And I've already alluded to, to the first part of the variation, which is right arm only. Take your left hand, hold your tricep in and hold it connected to the body, load it in the back of the trail wrist and just turn through and feel like you can maintain this angle in the back of the trail wrist and you get your body turned so it's pointing down towards the target. This is gonna get you used to feeling what it feels like to use the big muscles in your wedge swing and the big muscles are gonna provide us with the consistency. Not only consistency of strike, but consistency of speed, consistency of shaft lean, and consistency of overall result for the better. So, do a couple of these, get used to what it feels like. You'll really feel like the arms are just there for the journey. It's just the trail wrist getting in the right position and then turning through. Now, second variation is do it with the lead wrist. And the key with the lead wrist is actually feeling like on the way through, that wrist is bowed slightly. So it's pointing more down towards the target. That's gonna get you in the best possible position to where you can actually deliver some shaft lean and get that low flighted tra trajectory. So do those a couple of times. So feel it load in the back of the trail wrist, rotate all the way through. That's gonna get you in a great position. So if I now give this a go, you're gonna notice how if I freeze in that follow through position once I've hit it, how I've turned, I'm super wide and I've sort of held that release on the way through. So let's now bring this all together with a really simple and amazing drill. So all I've got is a tee here, and I'm gonna tee this ball up as if it was kind of the same height I would tee a three wood up. So maybe half an inch off the ground. Now this is helping us with sort of this crucial element of angle of attack. So everything we've worked on today is helping you get nice and shallow, but still obviously have a slight descending blow on the ball, being able to lower that strike location in the face to produce that low launch, high spin shot. And again, this is gonna work wonders for you because it's gonna fix those fat and thin shots and ultimately is gonna make you so much more consistent with these clubs. So the purpose of this drill is to implement everything we've done, feel like it's very much a body rotation and a hold on the way through and pick it off the tee. This is gonna teach you how to control your angle of attack. If you get too steep on it, you're gonna go underneath the ball, it's gonna hit high in the face, you're gonna feel it straight away. So you wanna be able to hit these shots pretty much on repeat, then from there transitioning down to the ground, you'll have these beautiful shallow divots to where the ball is coming off nice and low with a load of spin. Let me show you what this drill should look like. So I've got the ball underneath the lead eye, load it in the trail wrist, rotate through and hold. Let's pick it off this tee right here. And that came off pretty much perfectly. Great example right there. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you are somebody who struggles with your wedges, drop it down in the comments, but also let me know what other shots with your wedges you're really struggling with. If you need a little bit more one-to-one -one help with your game, I offer online coach on the Skillist platform. Please check that out in the link down below. But if not, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please give it a like and subscribe if you have, and I hope to see you back here soon.